Now, the first one is a belief system. And when I think about a belief system, I think of my mother, the late Miriam Carr. She was born in Poland. She immigrated to, um, to Palestine, and uh, she fought in two wars. She was in the British Army in World War II, and she was a commander of a battalion of 2,000 women in the War of Independence for Israel. She came in 1950 to the U.S., worked for Golda Meir at the U.N., and went to school at night and graduated in four years with a degree in economics. I couldn't even graduate without going to school at night. <laughs> she became a world-known economist. Presidents were asking for her opinions on certain things like Reagan won the Alaska oil pipeline. Well known. But no matter how much she achieved, she still had that bias in the workplace because she was a woman. She shared the story with me one time that in the 1960s she was applying for a job. The man looked at her and said, you have a great resume, but this is no place for a woman. Two decades later, she's a senior vice president of a big bank in New York. Runs into the same person who works for the same company, who's two rungs down the ladder from her. She walked up to him and says, hey, do you remember me? He goes, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, my name is Miriam. You interviewed me in the 1960s, and he told me that this is no place for a woman. I just wanted to thank you. <laughs> and then she walked away. But what allowed her to go that far? It was her belief system in herself. Do you have the belief system that you can achieve what you want? Do your customers have it? I'll take it to a true case study right now. A global manufacturer. This company man manufactured, created a reagent that cut in half the cost of mining copper. It took them 20 years to develop this product. When they brought it out in the 1980s, the copper mines were all going bankrupt because it was just costing too much to, to mine copper. This reagent cut in half the cost of mining copper and saved them from going bankrupt. When they heard me speak in the early 90s, the vice president came up to me and said, look, you know, when you come out with a new product and it works, your sales go like this. But then what happens? People re-engineer and come out with their own offerings, right? Even though it's not as good, it's cheaper, whatever. So our sales are like this right now. We're 60% of the world market share, but we only have 25% of the largest user's business. And all their minds are coming up for bid. I said, okay. Can you come out and get us ready for a strategy meeting for next Thursday because we have a big meeting with the sourcing team? So I flew out two days later and met with them in Tucson. Two gentlemen in the room, and I asked them this one question. What do you want for my intervention? Now, in that business, there's always bid for price, right? Every three years, bid for lowest price. That's how they bought. They said, we want to win the bid. I said, gentlemen, I don't think you really heard my question. What do you really want? Forget about what you know in the past. Forget about what you think is true. Start with a clean piece of white paper and create your destiny. Well, all of a sudden, their passion came out. Why do we have to bid? We started this industry and we saved them. Fine, so what do you want? A negotiated agreement. I said, okay. How long? Ten years, the life of the patent. I said, okay. You got 25% of the demand. How much do you want? 75%. I said, okay. Let me just repeat what you just told me. You don't want to bid. You want to negotiate a deal for 10 years for 75% of the demand. That's right. I said, you can do this if you really want to. So they looked at me and they said, how are we going to do it? And I said, I have no clue. <laughs> now, you may be looking at me like, why would I do that? Well, I didn't have a clue because we didn't get into it yet. But here's what I knew in my heart of hearts. They weren't even doing half of what I'm going to tell them. And I knew there's a lot of room for improvement. We're going to get there. But the thing is this. I don't have the answers up front. And if you have the answers up front when you go into a customer interview, you are not having the right sales conversation. Let me say it again. If you have the answers up front when you're going in to see a customer, you are not having the right sales conversation because the answers should be born out of collaboration as to what is important to them and what you could do for them. So I'm going to come back to the story in a little bit. But it all starts with your belief systems. Now, they had a challenge because they didn't really know me. They heard me speak, all right? But I told him, you know, in life, you need three things. You need to listen, trust, and act. And sometimes you're not going to have the answers up front. So you commit it to listening to what I'm going to say, trusting in the process, and acting on it. And they said yes. I said, let's go on the journey. <laughs>